up the goals of this training? Well, there are four questions we want you to be able to answer. One is, where are these parts positioned in our offering? Where they reside versus our other devices? What are the differences between these parts and the previous LM561B? And then the big question is, is are these parts compatible with existing LM561B design? And what would be the impact to those customer designs? And we'll have a short quiz at the end just to refresh you, your memories, so uh, pay attention, please. So this is the actual uh, roadmap and product positioning of our mid-power devices. You can see that the LM561B Plus and the LM561C is actually positioned in our performance category. We also offer another category we call versatile, and this is really kind of high flux um, devices for down lights and high bays. And then we also offer a category of uh, lumens per dollar, our economy uh, for our LM283B family and 281B. Those devices are really used for more entry level lighting and ambient tube and the low cost bulb type application. Uh, the LM561B and Plus and LM561C are really your premium products and your offer the highest efficacy of our family here and they're going to be in those high-end architectural uh, ambient type spaces. Highlighting here all the devices on the table that meet DLC premium. So for those top-end DLC premium applications, any of these devices meet the required L70 of 50,000 hours and the L90 of 36,000 hours and uh, can be used and have high enough efficacy to deliver well above 110 lumens per watt at the fixture level. Our performance roadmap here shows these two devices and I highlighted where the S5 and S6 actually reside in this roadmap so you can kind of see the transition we'll go through when we achieve a higher flux rank. Note here to your key customers that the roadmap goes well beyond 2017. That's over two years of continuous improvement we have planned for these devices, and I'm sure it'll be even more after that. So customers worried about, oh, is there going to be another part change? No, we're going to continue this family uh, and continue developing it well into the next couple of years. So what are the actual improvements and changes that were made to this device? Uh, for the B+. Plus. First of all, we did an enhanced package. Uh, the lead frame and mold were improved uh, to actually increase the lumen output by about 2 to 4%. Um, the thicker and more uh, substantial area of the lead frame also provides much better heat dissipation, and this was the key to reaching the 200 lumen per watt requirement. The stronger lead frame also gives a rise to us being able to um, protect the, the package from uh, warpage. So this is going to give your customers a much more reliable product, and uh, I think they'll be very happy with the design. Another big advantage we have is our color is greatly improved. Um, the 561B Plus and C are actually using, originally had only six color bins for the B family inside the ANSI standard. So even though we offer 10, only six of them actually reside inside the ANSI standard. This kind of limited the actual a selection of colors and made it more difficult to color mix. Um, this is still better than a lot of the competition had. Some people only offer a single color bin in the cool white and uh, other ones offer up to four bins in the cool white. We were offering six which gave us a, a slight advantage. But the real advantage of the new parts is we're now offering 16 color bins inside the ANSI standard. So this is a key advantage when the customers go to try to do their mixing formulas for the cool white devices. In the past,
past and our competition doesn't offer this, this kind of granularity of being able to select exact bins that are going to match up better um, in their end design. With that, we also are now offering in the cool white and the warm white a uh, three Mac Adam selection, and the website the website has the data sheet on the online already, as well as quarter bin in the cool white, which we didn't offer previously. So now that we have 16 bins, we can do quarter binning. We're also continuing to increase the performance uh, and kitting options to our devices. You can see here from the uh, slide, we have a complete assortment of kitting from full quarter, the standard uh, three, three block kitting, our cross quarter, which allows you know matching up the diagonals inside the quarter bin, as well as our three Mac, and then a new one is an outer bin. So that's basically not quarter bin, it's the outer ring of, of bins. This gives a maximum flexibility your customers to, to figure out which selection of bins works best for their application as well as being able to offer some very tight down to about two and a half to two Mac Adam color binning recipes with the uh, cross quarter mixing. The new Mac 3 Mac bin makes it very simple. We give them a 3 Mac Adam ellipse and it makes it very easy for them. The big thing about the, the B plus is it costs less than the B. So you're getting a lot of performance, a lot of capabilities, and a slightly lower price. So highly encourage customers to use the LM561 B plus in all their designs as much as possible. So let's recap. The differences are, one, you get more lumen output. Two, you get better thermal performance. Three, you get a stronger lead frame, so you get better reliability. Four, you're offering a much better color selection. And we offer additional kitting options uh, to make it even easier to order what you need. And finally, lower price than the B, on the B plus than the LM561B. So these are key uh, points that you need to bring up to your customers about changing to this new device. Now let's talk about what changes are required by your customers. So how compatible are these? Well, on this diagram here, you actually see the different packages in detail. You can see the B, the B+, and the C. Note the slightly larger die in the C part. That slightly larger die actually gives the lower thermal resistance to that device than even the B+. The larger die has a little bit more cost, so it gives a much higher lumen per watt performance and uh, costs us a little more to make, so we have to pass that along. But it gives the customers a great option of offering a high-end product and then a, a, an economical product, both with good performances. The dimensions are roughly the same. Um, the only difference is slightly uh, thinner package in the B plus and the C. You can see the lumen performance is, is better in both parts. And that lower forward voltage because of that larger die is the secret behind the higher efficacy. The LM80 data was grandfathered and transferred directly across the whole family. And we'll go through the details of why that is true. So there's no LM80 uh, issues associated with this, the LM80 for the original B applies to all three devices. This is the footprint land pattern. You can see that the new footprint actually encompasses the old footprint, and it follows the IPC standard for that. This means there are no PC board changes required, and I repeat, no PC board changes are required. The LM561 B Plus will solder directly down on the footprint of the former LM561B. So we did some extensive testing to make sure your customers wouldn't have any issues with this part. So we uh, tried interchangeability of all combinations. We put the B on the B footprint, we put the B plus on the B footprint, we put the B plus 
uh, the B on the B plus footprint and the B plus on the B plus footprint. In all cases, we measured the lumen performance. We also measured the temperature performance. And we checked the shear testing strength to make sure the, board, the parts would stay mounted on the board to our uh, recommended standard. So here are the results of that. If you look, you can see that the lumen performance was improved to about 4%. Um, the temperature performance is the one I find most interesting. You can see that the B plus part, even when placed on the B footprint, still offered up to about a degree to almost two degree C heat uh, drop that the B plus, uh, the B part could not do. So for customers who are trying to get a little bit more out of their parts, this uh, gives them a much more thermally stable design. And obviously the B plus on the B footprint offers the maximum thermal uh, capability. On the shear test, uh, all of these were well above the 15 gram uh, force required, so no problem there as far as holding on to the actual uh, parts of the board. It's going to work just fine there. So, will it fit? Will it solder down? That is confirmed. It will solder directly down without any board change. Optical differences. So what are the optical differences? You can see from this diagram we tested optically the both patterns and they're virtually identical. Very, very minor changes. This is almost in the noise level of the equipment between the two devices. So optically the B plus and the B part are the same. And so that one is also confirmed compatible. Finally the LM80 succession. So these are all the criteria right out of the, the LM80 test report that requires whether to succeed or not. And so the part numbering was chosen specifically to be to encompass the same. So you can see the part number fits. The number of die is both equal to one. We use the same materials in the optical path. We use the same type of deposition process employed. It was a uh, phosphor fill. We also did same level of testing, there's no changes in the temperature, so those temperatures will apply. And then also the CCT offering is the same. The big difference you can see here from the thermal resistance. Obviously the C part with the larger die and the better lead frame has the lowest possible thermal resistance. While the B plus has a slightly higher thermal resistance, it's still much lower than the B part. You can also see that the subcomponents, the testing current was the same. And the current per chip density, which is the key metric, was equal to or less than both devices. So, once again, confirm the LM80 transfers directly. We test, we've asked four different testing agencies to verify this, and we're at, all four came back and were good. So, what is the impact to the customer designs if they have an LM561B? And they're moving to an LM561B+. Number one, no PC board changes are required. Put that part right down. Two, has exactly the same optical distribution. Three, they're going to get higher lumen output than they would with the existing device. Four, they're going to have improved color control. So they're going to be able to mix their product better and end up with a more accurate final result. And five, very minimal UL impact, if any, necessary. If their part numbering was set up generically or put variables in in the right places, they won't have to do a thing. They could just start using the device with no problem. If they specified an exact part number, then they might need to add that part number to their, to their list. But I want to point out that they do not have to retest their fixtures. There's no reason to retest at all. They can put that part in there, uh, update that part number to their file, and they should be good to go with UL. And finally, they can save a little money. They can actually use get a little bit lower cost design by using the B-plus part. So what's the schedule release on all these devices? So we're looking here, our B-plus, we're looking at March uh, for S5 rank. Um, 
and even on our C part, we'll have that in March as well. The three Mac Adam is available now, and the website has the data sheet on there for the B plus. We should have that available in March as well for the C part. And then our um, 90 CRI devices. So the B plus 90 CRI is available. The website has the data sheet, and we're looking to have uh, the C part and 90 CRI very soon, probably by June.